new champion teaser eight years ago. Is this is this worth watching? Is this like a cinematic or something? Oh, it looks like it is. Oh, we gotta watch this. We gotta watch this. Oh, show. Do you guys know any like good bard content creators? Or like anyone that does uh, like guides or montages or something cool? Uh, like after after I've played the games, maybe we can maybe we can look at uh, some montages to see like how how the character actually should be played and not how I'm gonna butcher his kit entirely. <clears throat> Anyways, let's take a look. Is this loud? Oh shit. Is that bard? Oh. What the hell? That's a world rune? What is a world rune? Is he like a ghost? Or is he just fast? Oh, he's just fast as fuck, boy. Oh, he looks so cool. He looks so... Uh, what should you call it? He looks... He looks like a... Like a very mischievous uh, kind of a character. Kind of like a leprechaun or something. It's the mask, I think. It's the mask that does it. And his like bouncy, his bouncy style of walking. He looks very like, yeah, very mischievous. Kind of like a fairy or something that pulls pranks on people. That's uh, that's how I see him. Kind of like the the masked fools in Honkai Star Rail. If uh, if you've played that. Oh, damn. The meeps. They all disappeared? To like the spirit realm, maybe? He seems like a spirit character. He's pro he probably has ties to the spirit realm. The wandering caretaker. Okay. I guess we check uh, Nekrit's video about bar bard lore. Bard finally got proper lore. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. I am very interested in where he's from. Going quite some time back. Some of you may remember that on April Fools, I released a video covering Bart's lore. But there I turned it into a joke, where I literally just sat quietly there for about 10 minutes. Because at that time, Bart had like 3 lines of lore. But now, we don't need these jokes anymore. Because as Riot started cleaning up the lore of all the Targonian champions, perhaps in preparation to Targon becoming a deck in Legends of Runeterra, Bard got some proper lore as well. So finally, his story is not just speculations based on what happened in his animated teaser. 
Now we actually know what Bart is doing in the universe of League of Legends. So without further ado, let's have a look at the new lore of Bard. <laughs> without further ado... <laughs> as far as we know, Runeterra has two main realms. The physical realm and its mirrored magical version, the spirit realm. Yes, Connected okay. to the spirit realm, there are also sub-realms like the shadow realm, or one could argue even Bandle City. But outside of these two main planes of existence, there is also the celestial realm. And oh. this is where all the godlike beings come from. <laughs> the fucking Soraka with the banana. <laughs> that it is said that most inhabitants of the celestial realm see their home as a wondrous and vivid tapestry, woven with prismatic threads of purest starlight. However, within this realm, there is one entity that doesn't see the beauty of this dimension, but they can hear it. And of course, this enigmatic eternal entity is Bard, who senses ah. the celestial realm as a symphony of pleasing mystic music. In the very it's a musician. Beginning, Bard had drifted without purpose or perspective through a silent cosmos, but with a deep sense of anticipation that something miraculous would eventually come to fill it. Fate did not disappoint him. And with the forging of the first stars, which is an event likely linked to Aurelian's soul, since yeah. he holds the title the Star Forger, the silence was broken, and the first notes of creation rang in Bard's ear. As he traveled through the swirl... Wait, so Bard is just, is just as old as Aurelian Soul? Aurelian Soul creating the star actually made a plink -a plonk in, and, Bard, and Bard came out of that plink -a plonk Playing harmonies between the stars. On his way, he met the tiniest wisps of residual inspiration, which were left over from the birth of these symphonies. These semitonal incomplete modes of energy, or MEEPs as we know them, were drawn to him wherever he added his own voice into the cosmos, forever ringing in one perfect harmony. That is this actually so cool! His masterpiece. Bart didn't make the stars or the cosmic sounds of the galaxy, yet he gloried in it all the same. But after some time, which in a primordial cosmos could be years or eons, a noise appeared. It was so small at first, Bard might have missed it. But the Meeps, who all greatly adored Bard, drew his attention to a failed dynamic shift here, an unexpected syncopation there, and they even pointed out to him the growing absence of sound where before sound had been. Mm. Bard searched the celestial realm for clues as to what was happening, until he discovered the source. It was the most curious of things, a world with a song all of its own. Driven by unknown magic, the music produced by Runeterra was primitive, unevolved, and chaotic, just like the mortal beings that lived there. And Rock yet, music. it had an inherent beauty, like the rolling thunder of a storm, or mm. the melodious knocking of wooden chimes in the wind which come before that. Bard would have merely appreciated it for what it was, but unfortunately, this particular song had gone far beyond a mere counterpoint to what the Celestials were doing. The Celestials built the cosmos, and yet, this song was becoming destructive, so something had to be done. When Bard arrived on Runeterra, he first landed in the first lands of Ionia. There, Bard and his attendant Meeps crossed into the material realm, and suddenly, all at once, his ears became like eyes. To move around the physical realm, he made himself a simple body from the trinkets and fabrics of a traveling musician's wagon. This huh. included a charming circular mask with three holes in its face. Then, for many years, he walked around the world, confusing and delighting all the creatures he met along the way. And after a while, he realized that things on this world were far more complex than what he had imagined. Somehow, by a mistake, many objects of wild and unpredictable power seemed to have made their way into Runeterra, and they were disrupting the natural cosmic order of all things. The story is very vague about these powerful magical objects, but we can assume it is talking about the world runes, which, mm -hmm. just like the story said, by some unexplained mistake, the world runes were scattered across the very world which they have created. Anyway, okay. looking back up to the heavens, Bard deduced that some other... So Bard is just actually... Wait, how... How, how does... How does like an entity with no body of its own that just sees and reacts to sound even wear stuff? Like how does he have a clothes on and how 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 does he have a beard? <laughs> I don't get it. 
Or it's like Rise it tries to get the world runes away from people so they don't kill themselves. Ah, okay. He's a god, he's allowed. All right, all right, okay. Yeah, gods can do whatever the fuck they want. Her power within the celestial realm was at work here, though to what end he could not guess. Regardless, he has taken to the role of caretaker, retrieving anything out of place and returning it to where it can do no further harm. Though this may be only the first step to bringing the universe back in tune, it may also be the only way this world can be saved from what lies beyond it. And Bard is not blind to the future. He can see a great conflict approaching, one fought not in any single realm, but in all, and awaits the time he must finally pick a side. Whoa. And that was the new story of Bard. It wasn't the longest, but to be honest, yeah, that's cool. That's cool quite enough. a lot of new things. That's cool enough. So let's get through them. First of all, the story mentioned that when Bard arrived on Runeterra, it was already populated and fully working, which means that Bard wasn't there when Runeterra was created. All mm -hmm. we know is that Runeterra was created with the power of the world runes, and that it was highly likely created by the celestial beings. However, Bard wasn't one of them. Next we learned that Bard noticed how the world runes are throwing Runeterra off balance. And so he decided to help humans and the entire planet by removing objects that are not supposed to be on Runeterra. Makes and sense. this heavily ties into Bard's animated cinematic. I yeah. do believe that because once again, Riot is slowly making all of their cinematics canon. And so Bard is no exception. Bard's cinematic is happening during the Noxian invasion of Ionia. There, Noxians fought their way up Bard Mountain. We never <laughs> Bard Mountain, Noxian really? He has his own mountain? we can safely assume they were chasing a powerful artifact. In the cinematic, we can see one of the native Ionians trying to hide this artifact from the Noxians. But they end up having to use it in self-defense. And there, the cinematic reveals that it is so powerful, it could literally level entire landscapes. Of course, since humans released the power of this artifact, Bard was able to hear its song which helped him quickly find it, and he carried it to the peak of Bard Mountain. There, with his harmonious celestial magic, he transported it away from Runeterra. He just because goes remember, beep, beep. as was explained <laughs> in his bio, Bard's job is to take items that don't belong on Runeterra away from the world. Which beep. means that, yes, this powerful artifact had celestial origins. But it also means something cooler. I assume people call the mountain Bard Mountain because that's where you can often find Bard. Remember, his bio mentioned that on his journeys he often ran into mortal beings. But more importantly, it wouldn't make sense for a celestial artifact to be stored on Bard Mountain. Because if it was there from the beginning, Bard would have known about it. And he mm. would have immediately taken it away. So they took so, it to him on yes, purpose. likely happening in the cinematic. The local Ionians probably knew about Bard and what yeah. he was doing with all the celestial things. And so, when the Noxian invasion began, to make sure this artifact wouldn't become a powerful weapon in the hands of the Noxians, the local Ionians decided to take the artifact and travel to Bard Mountain, where Makes Bard sense. could take it away from them. So the Noxians didn't go to the mountain because they thought there was an artifact. It seems like they were chasing the Ionians who were running away with it. In other words, the Ionians most likely decided that if they wouldn't have the artifact, it would be safer if nobody would. And so, on the peak of Bard Mountain, they can give the artifact back to the Celestials. That's why in the cinematic the old man is ascending the mountain with the artifact. If it was the other way around, and if the artifact came from the mountain, it would have been stored at its peak from the beginning. Yeah, what yeah, is yeah. awesome about this entire cinematic... It, it definitely makes a, a lot of a lot of sense for sure. That's that's what I thought. I thought that they were bringing it to Bard. Uh, so yeah, th th this makes a lot of sense. Uh, now now that I know that it was actually Bard Mountain, uh, th this makes per perfect sense. Nematic is that it is so old that back then Riot probably had totally different plans with it. But as the lore evolved, they were able to give it a brand new meaning. And this brings us to the final part of this video, the new major reveal. The story has two sentences which people quickly go over, but which are incredibly important. These two sentences say, Casting his gaze back to the heavens, Bard deduced that some other power within the celestial realm was at work here, though to what end he could not guess. 
This means that the world runes were thrown back to Runeterra by a new mysterious villain that comes from the Celestial Realm. Mm -hmm. So we are likely not talking about the Watchers, who are outside all of the realities that we know of. No, this means that we have a new evil Celestial on our hands. Almost like a Dark Star, but canon. At first I thought that this might have been the work of the Aspect of Twilight, because that's the entity which usually plays tricks on the other Celestials. And since Riot recently updated Zoe's bio, that was my first suspicion. But unfortunately, although her new bio made Zoe a bit cooler, especially after learning the fact that Zoe now roams around Demacia, still, there was no mention of the Twilight's motivation for anything. All we learned was that the aspect of... I, I, I have a long time left to go until I get to Zoe. <laughs> so we're not going to learn about the aspect of Twilight in quite some time. But she, she also looks like a very mischievous uh, character. And yeah, of course, she p p plays pranks on the, <laughs> on the other Celestials. It makes sense. Need to shape up on Watcher Lori. I don't even know what a Watcher is, my friend. I also need to do that. Twilight likes people with a lot of joy, which Zoe certainly does have. So going back to what Bard mentioned, this still means that the scattering of the world runes was a Celestial inside job. But although it came from within the Celestial Realm, it feels like it wasn't one of the aspects that we know. Which to me sounds like a good old teaser for a future champion. Hmm. Maybe Riot wants to give us something similar to Dark Stars, but in the canon universe. Perhaps that's why Bard mentioned that he might have to pick a side. Although that's probably just going to be either help humans and fix Runeterra, or work with the Celestials and wipe it clean. But somehow it should be still linked to more aspects. After all, it's been a while since we have learned something new about them. And who knows, even though Riot already considered it, maybe they decided to not turn Set into the Aspect of Might, because they already had a plan for something else regarding the Aspect. Hmm. Okay. Wonderful Necrit lore video once again. Love it, love it. His videos are amazing. I mean, I like, I like that he's... Uh, He's just uh, a, a very sound-oriented guy. He's just been chilling in the cosmos together with Aurelian Soul from the beginning. Just vibing, vibing to the music of the world, of the cosmos. That's pretty cool. And I like that he just, like, <laughs> he came down to Runeterra, found a merchant's cart, and just like, hmm, I'm gonna pick a bunch of random stuff and put myself together into a decently humanoid form. Uh, that, that's that's pretty funny. Uh, maybe maybe we watch this Bard's magical journey. Maybe this is fun. <laughs> he can't resist the portal. What? <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> There's a meep in her boobs. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Soraka Pentakill. What is this? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't grope, don't grope random women. Don't do it. Why was Soraka buff? I mean, it's the it's the ADC Soraka. <laughs> you know how it is. What is this? Amogus. <laughs> that looked like Among Us. Oh. That actually scared me. Hello. Meep. <laughs> what? What is going on? Israel finding a runestone? <laughs> there was a meep inside of it.
I love that he just communicates with wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna get through there. <laughs> oh no, he gave up. What? Oh. What is this? Oh shit. He's straight down the middle. Oh. <laughs> what is with all these random styles? This must have been a collaboration between a bunch of different animators. That's really cool. I really love the stick figure fights. Oh, <gasps> Timo! Timo with the slap! Oh. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> he just came. <laughs> he just came and started puking meeps. Hey everybody, this is Luke Reinert, summoner named Rabbit Lord. Ah. As one of Bard's original creators, I am so thrilled to get to see Bard doing Bard things. This animation was ah. developed by an amazing team of content creators for the Riot Games Animation Lab event. It's this is actually, actually so cool. That they, that they did all of this together, with all of the different styles. I love it. Wow. Okay, let's quickly take a look at some of Bard's skins before we uh, go through the, like the, the lore and the, uh, the gameplay here. So w which one is your favorite skin when it comes to Bard? Hit me up in the comments. Use Elderwood Bard. All right. So we have Shanghai Scrolls. Ooh. So it seems like they really have a fetish for uh, doing these Asian style, uh, like Eastern versions of all of their skins. Like pretty much every single character I've watched now has a, has like one, at least one of these types of skins. Now he seems more of like a, yeah, a Japanese uh, woodland spirit. But, but this is really cool. The heel. Oh, there's a little there's a little guy who grows inside of the pot. Oh, that's actually so cute. Wait, the portal? Uh, the portal is like oh, it's a setting sun. Ah, cafe cuties. Whoa, I like this one. <laughs> he actually looks so pretty. <laughs> what the hell? So oh, the model, the model for his uh, like body looks great on bo both of these skins. <gasps> it pours the tea! It actually pours the tea and when it's done... And there's a heart! Oh my god, there's no way, there's no, there's actually no way. <gasps> I want astronaut bard. The meeps are little aliens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about, Alpha. I know what you're talking about. And th this is the best skin, for sure, for sure. I haven't even seen the rest. There's no way. There's no way they can beat aliens. And the TP? Oh, he gets... He gets zapped up into his... Into his UFO. Okay, that's... That's a 10 out of 10. That's a 10 out of 10. Jesus Christ. Bard Bard. Oh, he's an actual Bard. <laughs> He's an actual bard. The bard bard. That's such a good name. That actually deserves uh, creds for the name. But there's no no animation differences. All right. Snow day bard. Oh, he looks he looks cute. And there's a hot choco. <gasps> hot choco. So this is the ice variant. It's okay. Nothing too special, I think. I did like the hot cocoa filling up for his heel. That was cool. And the meeps being little penguins, I mean... <gasps> little penguins! I don't think it wins against the, the alien, though. It doesn't win against the alien. What about Elderwood Bard? This is more of like a western woodland spirit. 